Hello, my name is Matteo. Today I want to talk to you about the latest model that I wrote. It's called Simple Auth and it's um, a simple implementation, a server implementation of the OAuth 2.0 authorization framework. And in particular, uh, this is a, the bearer token specification that I implemented. So this is a way, uh, this module provides you with a way of authorizing your requests, so identifying a user for your requests or when you're doing uh, something like a decoupled approach uh, because you're writing an Angular app or uh, React.js or Android or iOS and you're making REST requests and you need to uh, be able to make requests on behalf of the user. So um, just before we start, uh, one word. Um, if you ever used OAuth, uh, you you can uh, just use keep using it. Uh, the, the main difference between the two is that OAuth requires you to sign your uh, URLs, your requests, and in order to authenticate your user. And that can be complicated because it uh, requires some URA wrangling and uh, sorting parts of the URL in a specific order and then digesting and uh, this signature can be uh, somehow complicated and with the advance of the, of the technology uh, where SSL and HTTPS is more approachable for everyone that is no longer necessary and is a hassle that you can avoid yourself uh, so uh, using simple auth and turning on SSL uh, it should be enough to make your requests, your authentication requests, secure. And uh, that's what we are going to be doing. So, uh, in order to use the module, I just do drash, just as usual, enable simple auth. I can type, promise. Okay. Uh, so once this is enabled, uh, the first thing that you're going to notice, and in this browser I'm logged in as uh, the test user. If I go to my account, you're going to see here in the URL that says user slash two, and that's the, um, that's the test user that I, that I used. I'm going to disable my debugger because this is making requests a little bit slow. I, you can see that there is an extra tab here of two tokens uh, with a big button that says add access token because you don't have any. So we're going to click that and uh, to create an access token you can see that you have uh, three fields. The first one is the user you want to create this token for. Uh, this is uh, basically going to be uh, the default for the logged in user and that's what you are going to use most of the time but just know that as an administrator you can create a token on behalf of another user so uh, then uh, we can move on to the expiration so by setting an expiration and the default is uh, to expire in five minutes uh, what you're doing is uh, you're saying the system, okay, uh, you are going to identify users by their token if the token is not expired. And that's uh, an extra security measure. So if you ever lost your token um, because uh, you shared it in Facebook or something like that, uh, you could uh, be not harmed by the fact that all the users can identify themselves as you because uh, the token may be expired. So you will want to select a small window, a small expiration window, and in a future video I'm going to tell you how you can refresh this token and generate a new token uh, without having to go and log into Drupal and click this button, etc. So uh, I'm going to put this, I'm going to expire this to tomorrow so I can talk and this doesn't expire while I'm explaining you how this works. Um, so the next field uh, is global, uh, the resource global. Um, again, uh, I'm gonna go into more detail in another video. So uh, a resource is a compendium of permissions uh, that you can apply if logged in with uh, the access token. So you 
can limit the scope of the things that a, a user identified with an access token can do or cannot do. But remember, uh, this is going to be explained in a future video. So basically, uh, most of the time, uh, what you need to do is just not touch anything. Just click Save, and it's going to create your token and uh, an extra token, which is for the authentication resource. Um, uh, this is going to be used. This token is going to be used to refresh your access token when your access token expires. So. Uh, we're not going to touch this for now, so we're going to use this as our access token. All right, uh, but before we can use our access token with the with course rest subsystem, uh, we're going to have to do some modifications. So first, I want to show you how uh, I have set up my my permissions here. So basically. <clears throat> I only have one resource enabled, which is the content resource, uh, the access for nodes. And I'm only allowing authenticated users to access the, um, the nodes via REST. So if I come over here and I request uh, a node, it's going to say no, no, unauthorized. Right? That's that's okay, that's what we expected. Uh, so, <clears throat> in order to allow to authenticate with the token, uh, we're going to use the REST UI module in here to click edit for the nodes and say uh, I want to use token bearer. So, make sure that this box is checked and then save configuration. So with that, we're going to allow the REST system to explore for the token bearer, sorry, for the, for the token in the, in the header to authenticate yourself. So uh, by going to the, to the project page, you will see that you need to provide a header called authorization and then better space and then your token so that's exactly what we're going to do here so uh, over here authorization and then the value is bearer space and then our token that i'm going to copy all right uh, make sure that you don't have double spaces or anything like that don't and put quotes around this uh, just submit the, um, the request and with this whenever the request hits Drupal the simple auth module is going to detect that there is an authorization header that starts with bearer space and then with a token it's going to extract this token it's going to search for a user that created, the, created this token and it's going to check that the token is, is not expired and if all that is correct it's going to authenticate this request as if that user made it uh, so let's click send if everything goes well we're going to be authorized or authenticated as the test user the user number two and since that is an authenticated user uh, we saw earlier before that the authenticated user is able to uh, access the the rest node resource so let's click send and uh, you can see that there is a 200 and you can access the node and you can see the content etc and if you disable the header you're back to unauthorized so basically by providing the token you're making the request as if it was for uh, user 2 uh, and of course you can have different tokens created at the same time I'm gonna create a token for the admin user just because it's that simple access token save and then I'm going to make this request 
and voila, we are identified as the admin user. And if we change this and somehow provide um, a wrong token, because there's someone trying to guess our token, it's going to get a forbidden error code. So that's how you authenticate your request. Um, as you can see, it's very easy. You can create a token just by going to your Drupal profile, create a token and copy it and make your request. But uh, this is not very useful for your decoupled app because you cannot require your users to go into Drupal, get the token, put it somewhere in a configuration and then use that and then after five minutes go through the same process again. So what we are going to, to watch next is how you can, as, um, as the consumer developer, and by that I mean the React developer or the iOS or Android developer, how you can make requests with this refresh token that we talked about before with this token you're going to be able to get another access token very easily without logging into Drupal and refresh this over and over again so that's going to be in a in another video thank you for watching